What's going on guys, Briar Rabbit here. Today we're gonna to be taking a look at this guy, the Nikon Daija Arcade Stick. It's French, it's very fancy, and it may be my favorite PlayStation 5 arcade stick that's been released so far. To tell you more, I'm gonna put it down on the table and we'll get to the full review. All right, now that we've got this thing on the table, let's take a look around it. Uh, first of all, you're gonna see a pretty standard layout here with Sanwa buttons, as well as a Sanwa joystick. Uh, up here, we've got a profile button, a PlayStation button, and a tournament lockout switch. The Plexi up here is easily removable. There's just, what is there, eight screws, something like that. Uh, you just pop these screws out, grab the Plexi right out of here. There's just a paper insert. It actually comes with three different inserts. So kind of an art like this, a uh, darker art that is similar, and then just a white blank that you could do whatever you want with. Uh, and it's kind of notable that the button labels, the X, the O, the square, the triangle, R1, R1, R2, L1, L2, those are actually printed on the Plexi. So they stay with the Plexi. You don't have to worry about putting those in your art. Uh, and losing the labels. Kind of a nice feature. Down here, we've got kind of a, I would call this a pad, but it's not soft. It's still hard plastic, but you can kind of see it's uh, perforated in a way where it's just, it's very comfortable for your palms to rest on. I, I do rest my palms on the joystick, uh, especially when I'm playing on a tabletop. When I'm playing in my lap, they tend to be up a little higher, but there's just something kind of like a soft texture to this and it's more comfortable than just laying your palms on Plexi for sure. Uh, and it's not as cold as laying your hands on metal. So like if you play in the winter and your hands tend to get cold while you play, uh, playing on plastic can actually be more comfortable because it's it kind of insulates your hand better than metal, which just kind of sucks all the heat out of your hand. There's a very comfortable place to set your hand with this little pad here. We're gonna move along to the side here. And let's see if the camera will come into focus. This is where we're gonna see most of our control buttons. So instead of having kind of like our system control buttons up here, something like what, I don't know, Quamba does or Hori does, Nikon put them on the side. And to be honest with you, I kind of like this because it keeps them out of the way. You can't see them when you're playing, but you're gonna quickly figure out, you know, which ones are which and be able to get to them by feel. So we got R3, L3, which are great additions. Some joysticks don't have that. And like for using a training mode to like reset your characters or something like that, it can be really handy to have those. So I'm really glad that these are on here. We got the, I think this is the menu button, the share button, uh, the PlayStation kind of touchpad. Uh, and then over here, what are these? This is the, this controls, it's a three-way switch that controls the joystick, whether the joystick is the left stick, the right stick, or the D-pad. And then I believe this is to select between PS5, PS4, and PC mode. Pretty simple along here. We also have one of the buttons to open up the top. You can see that kind of pop when I do that. So we'll get we'll, we'll talk more about that in a minute. Uh, along the front of the controller, we can see a USB-C hole. Now, something to note about this USB-C hole is it is kind of recessed in here. Not all cables I tested fit inside this hole, so you do be, have to be careful. It's not like so small that it's like proprietary and you're gonna have to order the cable directly from Nacon. Uh, other cables did fit, uh, but some cables just didn't work, which was weird because I've those cables have worked with other controllers in the past, other arcade sticks in the past. So this stick is a little bit picky about what USB-C cable you plug into it. It's not a deal breaker. I definitely found cables around that worked fine and fit in this hole, but it wasn't every cable. So just be aware of that. Around this side here, not much aside from another one of these buttons to open the top of the controller up and toward your body we have a playstation logo as well as a three and a half millimeter jack and that is uh, both a microphone and a headset jack so uh, pretty useful but it does kind of poke into your uh, pokes toward your body it is recessed here so the jack theoretically won't like hit you in the stomach or your hip um, but you know, it does point toward you, it's not on the side. I kind of wish they just put it on the side here with the rest of the controls. Seems like a natural placement for it, but honestly, I don't use these too often anyway, so I'm not that concerned about it. The bottom of the controller, check this huge rubber pad out. 
If you've ever felt the bottom of kind of like a standard mouse pad, that's exactly what this feels like. It's very non-slip uh, on a table or on your lap. This thing didn't go anywhere. The joystick itself is pretty heavy as well, um, and that really contributes to the stability. Overall, like I found this to be very comfortable both on my lap uh, and on a table. It is a thick boy though. Uh, so let me get the obsidian here. If you compare the thickness of this guy to the obsidian, you know, there's a, there's a somewhat big difference. You can see the obsidian kind of slopes toward the user and it's a little bit thinner. This is a lot thicker. I think that's okay. It was comfortable for me. If you play on a high desk, uh, you may want to raise your chair up a little bit uh, just to make it a little more comfortable because it, it does sit a little high up off the desk and it's not slanted toward you. It is a perfectly flat surface. I found this controller most comfortable when it was in my lap. It just felt completely natural. It was a nice size. And honestly, the added depth, the height of the deck off of my lap just made it comfortable to play on. I, I really liked it. Uh, I think it might be one of the most comfortable controllers I've ever played on uh, for you know all the reasons I've already talked about. Uh, there is a metal plate under the Plexi. So I wasn't actually sure about that. If you open it up, uh, it looks like it's all plastic under there. But actually, if you take the art off, let me see if I can get that in camera a little better. It looks like this is gonna be all plastic here but there is actually a metal plate sandwiched between this plastic and the artwork and plexi up here, which does add to its stiffness. You can see there is like a little bit of give to it, just a little bit though, but it, it feels solid when you're actually playing on it. Uh, the joystick feels solidly on there. The buttons feel solidly okay. It's just when you press on the plexi, which I mean, what, when would you do that unless you're like legitimately just testing to see if there's deck flex? Feels very solid. So you just saw I opened up the controller very easily. I, I love this feature. This might be my favorite feature of this thing is there's just these two switches here, these two little buttons, you pop them and the thing just opens right up. Once it opens up, you got place to store your cable here, uh, which is awesome because it's a removable cable. As far as I know, it's the lowest priced uh, PS5 joystick that has a removable cable. And I don't know if you guys saw any uh, of the news from Evo this year, but the PlayStation 5s were getting so hot they were melting the USB cables. So people's, they'd pull their cables out of the PS5 after their match and the thing would just like kind of disintegrate because it melted inside the PS5. So having a removable cable with a PS5 seems like pretty good idea so that you don't just like wreck your, you know, 200 to $300 arcade stick. You know, if you got a if you got a broken cable, you can just swap out the cable, not the whole stick, or try and do like surgery on the inside of the stick. It's it's ridiculous. This is such a nice feature having a removable cable. I don't know why every arcade stick doesn't do it. I'm sure it's cost, but it is like user wise amazing. And having this little storage spot in here is great as well. The storage spot is a little tiny, honestly. You got to kind of like really be careful about how small you kind of scrunch up this cable to get it to fit in there. But I mean, it's fine. It's fine. I mean, and honestly, like you can just, you know, no biggie. All right. Next we have uh, some storage here. We have storage for a uh, bat top. If you're into bat tops, uh, we also have, you can put the ball top in here. We also have a little hex driver here, and that is specifically used for the screws to remove the artwork. Man, it's so easy to remove the artwork on this. It's legitimately the fastest I've ever seen. Uh, and it's really nice that they put that right in there. And then we also have, it's kind of a coin, uh, but it works as kind of a flathead screwdriver and it is perfect for uh, just unscrewing the ball top. Uh, right here. So you just kind of plug this into uh, the bottom of your joystick to hold it still and then screw the ball top on or off. And then you can swap it out with the uh, with the bat top or whatever, you know, super easy. I really like this. You know, we've got all this storage inside and Nacon has done a great job of, you know, putting stuff in here that is actually useful. You got cable storage. Uh, you've got 
tools. You've got an extra bat top if you're into that. You know, you got a lot of different stuff in here, and it's all useful. It's not just like weird stuff. One of the things about the Quamba Obsidian 2 that I really I was perplexed by is it has a lot of storage, but it doesn't have tools. It has an extra bat top, but you would need to bring a tool of your own to unscrew the ball top and replace it uh, because it's not included. And like, what's all this storage for if we're not going to use it? And also, the storage is very inconvenient because you got to do two thumb screws on each side for the cable storage or for uh, for the bat top. Very strange. Very strange. It's a great joystick. Uh, it's just a very strange layout. So I really, really like this. Uh, also, it is super. I mentioned earlier, it's very easy to replace the artwork here. It comes with three pieces of art right out of the box, and then you can just, you know, you can just print out whatever you want, uh, stick it under the plexi, uh, and you can really customize this to your heart's content. And it's very easy to do. Uh, and one of the genius things is you don't have to remove the buttons to do it because the buttons have little plexi rings under them. Let me just pop one of these off here. So if we pop this guy off, I'm going to show you this ring. So what they've done is, I think I've seen this before uh, on a Mad Cat stick, is they've just made these small plexi rings that go... Uh, kind of on the jo on the buttons here, and then you pop the button in, and that makes the button correctly you know level with the plexi, but it allows them to cut a big enough hole around the plexi that you can just lift the plexi off and keep the buttons in place instead of instead of having to take all the buttons out, all the buttons out to replace your artwork. All you really have to do is unscrew the ball top and unscrew these eight screws and you're you're off to the races. So if you're somebody who likes to change your artwork often, uh, this is gonna be a great stick for you. I like this stick so much because A, it's very comfortable. B, I love being able to just get into the insides. C, it's got the removable cable. Like this one, this joystick really hits a lot of the a lot of the you know kind of features that I value. Um, there are some downsides I would say to it. Uh, these joints, these hinges here, they are plastic, um, and so are these kind of uh, latches. I would say these these latches that open and close it. They feel pretty solid, um, but them being plastic does worry about worry me. This is an expensive joystick. And, you know, if you kind of look, there is some play to these hinges. Now, my suspicion is this is going to last long enough, um, but it's certainly not going to last forever. Uh, plastic does wear out. It ages, you know, it starts to crack and to, you know, it just gets old. Plastic gets old. So, over time, I'm guessing this is going to be one of the first thing that wears out, as well as these hinges or these latches. Uh, even right out of the box, these these latches are you know a little finicky. Sometimes you think you got it all the way down, but one side's still up, one side's still down, and you know you don't even realize it. Well, see that that just happened right there. So you know they're a little they're, they're not like the highest quality latches and hinges. But I mean, you know, considering the price points of the competition and what they're offering, I'm giving them a pass on this one. Honestly, you know, com compared to the Quamba Obsidian, that there's no easy way to get into. Compared to the Hori Alpha, that you know you can get into it, but the layout just isn't like thought out that well. I, re I really, I think this is a pretty nice system, uh, and clearly they had to hit a price point. They hit it. Uh, it feels solid enough, uh, especially when it's closed. Like, you can't even tell that it would open when it's closed. Uh, as far as fit and finish goes, I would say there are some kind of sharp edges around, especially on the corners here. You'll notice it, like, if you brush your, you know, mainly, like, when you're carrying around the stick. And uh, if your hands kind of brush these edges, you might you might feel it or hear it. Uh, not around like the sides. It's really just the corner. So I don't know. You know, again, it, it, it's not a thousand dollar, you know, made by Apple kind of thing, but it is very nice. Uh, overall, I got to say, I highly recommend this stick. Uh, I know it's, it, it is expensive, but if you look at it, 
compared to the pricing of other sticks. Uh, it's a little more expensive than something like the Hori Alpha, but I think that it's better thought out. It's a more comfortable shape. It's not quite as long uh, this way as the Hori Alpha, uh, which makes it a little more comfortable for me, especially on my lap. Uh, it's a little thicker than something like a Quamba Obsidian, but I think that's, you know, that's being able to open it up easily like this instead of like really having to get the screwdriver out and doing some surgery on a Quamba Obsidian. Uh, I think this is worth it. It feels very solid. Not as solid as a Quamba Obsidian. I think part of the, you know, part of the Quamba Obsidian's, the, the drawback is that it's hard to get into. The upside is the whole thing just feels very solid and well put together. Uh, it feels just as solid as a Hori Alpha, uh, not quite as solid as an Obsidian 2, uh, but pretty solid. Like uh, nothing that you would notice while you're playing. Uh, there is custom software. You can plug it into a PC uh, and set up profiles to configure the buttons. So like, you know, if you like playing two different games on the same PC and you don't want to go in and configure the buttons all the time, uh, you can just switch the profiles and, you know, do for King of Fighters or for Street Fighter or, you know, have custom profiles for games or even shooting games or whatever you wish, uh, which is really convenient. Uh, I don't tend to use that too much. I just go into the settings of the game, but there are some games that kind of forget your settings. So maybe I should be using that profile button a little bit more. Uh, overall, I think this stick looks good. It feels good. It's got a ton of really cool features. And honestly, I highly recommend it. I think it for the price point, all of, okay, all of the joysticks are really expensive this generation. I think this one, considering the competition, hits a good price point uh, and has a lot of the features that I really like. And to be honest with you, removable cables, I think, you gotta do it. You gotta do it. it. It should be in every joystick. I I don't like when they they're not included. So that's gonna do it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Hit that like button if you like the video. Hit subscribe if you're new to the channel. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.